Hi, this is Dr. Weideman again, and I'm going to show you uh, in Chapter 5 uh, how to use the StatCrunch tools to work some problems. So I'm in the um, ebook first. I'm going to work on a couple problems here. Um, the first one I'm going to look at is problem 26. And it tells us that John Beal um, of, of California recorded the, cars, the speeds of cars driving past his house where the speed limit was posted at 20 miles per hour. He took 100 readings and he got an average speed or mean speed of 23.84 with a standard deviation of 3.56. How many standard deviations from the mean would a car going under the speed limit be? Okay, so a car going under the speed limit would be 20 miles per hour or less. So remember to do a z-score. I don't even need stat crunch for this. I'm just going to pull up a little online calculator here. So I'm looking at this car going 20 miles per hour and I'm going to see how far away is it from the mean of 23.84 and it's uh, 3.8 miles below the mean and then I'm going to go ahead and divide by the standard deviation and that's given me the z-score actually so this particular car that's going the speed limit is about 1.08 standard deviations below the mean. Um, what would be more unusual a car traveling 34 or a car going uh, 10 miles per hour. Um, and now we could use um, just z-scores, but I thought I would show you um, in um, StatCrunch how you can use a tool in there called a normal calculator. So if you go to Stat and then go to Calculators, and we're going to use a normal calculator. And what you do here is put in the mean and the standard deviation, and then you can find areas under the curve, or you can see where different values would fall. So let's go ahead and put in the mean speed for these cars, which was 23.84 in this gentleman's sample, and the standard deviation was 3.56. And they want to know what would be more unusual, a car traveling 34? So let's find the area above 34 miles per hour. Let's see how what the probability of a car going that speed in, under this distribution would be. It's about 0.002. So we might want to remember that. Um, and then let's go in and see what about the car going. So remember this 0.002. Now we're going to compare it to the car going, and it's going to be less than this time, going 10 miles per hour. And that's much, much smaller. So, And likewise, we can go ahead and find the, the z-score. So let's find the z-score for 10. 10 minus 23.56 divided by uh, was 3.56. So that car is 3.81 standard deviations below the mean. And then if we compare that to the car going 34, 34 minus the mean of 23.84 and then divide by 3.56 and so that car is about 2.85 standard deviations above the mean so the car going 10 is much more unusual okay so let's go back that was one problem I wanted to do with you and then I also wanted to look at problem 38 uh, which it goes right along with this one. This one I'm going to show you how to do some things in StatCrunch actually. This follows the same data set which I've already got pulled up um, for the car speeds. And they want to know if it's appropriate to use the normal model. So I've already got that data set. If you go back to the prior problem, um, there's a link to the data set in StatCrunch. Um, oh, I guess I don't have it pulled up. Sorry, I thought I did. Okay, let's go back for a second. I do need to go back. I thought I had pulled it up before. So let's just go back here. There's a link to the data right here. It'll just take a minute to open up. Um, and then we're going to be able to do some graphical displays with that data that will help us determine if normality is a reasonable assumption. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up in the new stat crunch. I like the way it looks better. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is um, let's go to graph and let's do a histogram first because that's one way to assess normality um, and it really doesn't matter if it's frequency or relative frequency so let's take a look at what the histogram looks like um, histogram looks pretty good unimodal fairly symmetric okay now let's go ahead and do a normal probability plot which is called a QQ plot here in StatCrunch and I'm going to pick that same variable and remember if you remember the material in this chapter when we do a normal probability plot we're looking for the data as it's plotted here to follow a fairly straight line we don't want to see any ups and downs like that and that looks pretty good um, okay so let's go back to the ebook and I wanted to do one additional problem which was number th uh, 48 rather uh, which is on the next page 
and this is a problem about tires. Um, one more page, page 137, sorry. Um, and I'm going to use those tools again in there. Um, we're talking about tires here. The tire manufacturer believes the tread life of the snow tires can be described by a normal model with this mean and this standard deviation. So let me jump over here um, to stat crunch and let's go ahead and pull up that normal calculator and we can go ahead and enter that information in because we know we're going to be working with a mean of 32,000 miles and a standard deviation of 2,500 miles. Okay, so we're all set now to, to answer questions. So let's go back to the text and see what they ask us. If you buy one, would it be reasonable for you to hope it will last 40,000 miles? Okay, so let's go back to our tool here. So that would mean, what's the probability it's above greater than 40,000 miles? Okay, notice 40,000 is way out here. So look at my probability. Very, very unusual. And in fact, if you calculate the z-score, you'll see that it's very unusual. Let's pull our calculator up again. So we're doing 40,000 miles minus 32,000 miles. Oh, I think I got an extra zero there. 32,000. And then divide by 2,500. Well, I made a mistake somehow. Let's start again. 40,000 miles. Uh, subtract 32, again I put too many zeros in, 32,000, there we go, and then divide by 2,500. So 3.2 standard deviations above the mean, that's pretty unusual. Um, let's see what else they ask us. What fraction of tires can be expected to last less than 30,000? Less than 30,000. So let's go ahead and compute we want less than and this time we want 30,000 rather than 40,000 so about 21 percent of the tires would be expected to last less than um, 20,000 miles um, what fraction would be last between 30 and 35,000 now if you remember in the handout for this chapter in order to do that we have to do a subtraction on the probabilities so let's go ahead and remember this 0.212 and then we're also going to do between 30 and 35 so now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the probability less than 35 is 8849 so on my calculator I'm going to take 8849 and subtract the 0.212, so about 67%, 67.3% of the tires are expected to last between 30 and 35,000 miles, so in this region here. Um, estimate the IQR. Okay, how do we do the IQR? Okay, remember the IQR, now this time we're going to use the tool differently. We're going to take this number out and we're going to see where's the area where's the 25 percent area fall so at about 30,313, 314 and that's Q1 and then for Q3 again I'll take this number out and remember then I want either 75 percent less less or 25 percent above you could calculate it either way and then to find the IQR what do we do we just subtract um, 33686 subtract um, the 30314 to get the IQR um, and then in a marketing strategy, local tire wants to offer a refund whose tires don't last a certain number of miles. If he only wants to give a refund to 1 out of 25, what mileage should he use to guarantee that? So 1 out of 25 would mean the area is o, divided 04, right? Oops. And so we want to calculate if it doesn't last at least that long. Actually, we want it to be, let's go back here. We want it to be. Uh, no, that's right. Yeah, well, that's right. Let me go back. We want this to be 0 0.04. Whoops. So this is the tire, the cutoffs, 27,623. So I hope that this helps you um, work your problems in Chapter 5.